Hello everyone, Mimikins here. I thought I would share with you today my group support light bow gun build which I found very effective in taking down the behemoth. I would like to clearly state now that this video does not utilise armour from the behemoth himself. Instead, all the gear I am using here was available before the introduction of the DLC. I will be showcasing builds using the new gear in my next video, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't checked out the rewards from farming the behemoth, I'll just show you. The armor set. This is actually the same model as the Dragoon Artifact armor in Final Fantasy XIV. From just looking at the skills on the side, I know a lot of people are going to be happy to see more gear options for Critical Eye, Attack and Critical Boost. So the skill set bonuses. Elemental Airborne. Elemental damage is increased for jumping attacks. I can see this being very nice for certain weapon attacks. I will definitely need to test this out further. Master's Touch prevents your weapon from losing sharpness during critical hits. This would be absolutely amazing on critical melee builds. I wish it had a multifunctional use that also affected ranged weapons. For example, like how Mind's Eye Ballistics affects melee and range in their own unique ways. Master Touch already existed in a 3 set bonus for Teostra, but I felt that armour lacked decent skills and jewel slots to make it a good option for building. In case you're wondering, no, the sets can't be mixed to gain the Master's Touch effect, they are considered separate. There is only one weapon you can get from the Behemoth, it's an Insect Glaive, which just so happens to be the same model and name of the Relic weapon for Dragoon in Final Fantasy XIV. It can reach white sharpness with Handicraft level 4, although it is a small bar. But look at the weapon, it naturally comes with 20% affinity and combine this with the Behemoth set with high critical skills and the set bonus Master's Touch, where you lose no sharpness on critical hits, a high critical build could work exceptionally well, not just in skills but visually too. I love the look of this weapon. The kin set design is an ethereal blue dragon. Dragoons in Final Fantasy often had dragons or wyverns as pets, so it's nice to see they've added this touch in. You can turn your Pelico into a Moogle. This is just so cute. You can also make this gold chocobo rod, which was the one wielded by Good King Moogle, Mog, which was a pretty hectic primal fight in Final Fantasy XIV. And who can forget little Poogie? He has an outfit to collect which looks exactly like the minion pet in 14. Okay, let's move on to my light bowgun setup. I decided I wanted to go for a water rapid fire elemental build since the behemoth has a 2 star weakness to water and I like how large the critical range is. This is going to give me a lot of opportunities to attack while evading nasty attacks. I also get to use one of my favourite light bow guns, the Empress Shell Sticks, which comes with Spare Shot for saving ammo and increasing DPS. I have my weapon augmented with Affinity already, so this build is going to give me 100% critical rate on weak spots. I've got some survival skills for myself, like health boost and recovery speed. Speed eating and wide range has saved so many lives. It allows other party members to DPS more, especially slow sheathing weapons. It also allows me to buff people who are too cheap to do so themselves. If you don't have Valhazic Coil Y from the Arch Tempered Valhazic or lacking a release jewel for ammo up, you can swap out the Waste Scott for a Cold Taros Beta version. Here is an alternative build which has no event monster gear. It's also friendly for those lacking maximum might jewels. You can switch out various jewels and the charm around to fit your jewel needs. This is my item loadout for my bowgun. Wide range allows me to apply most of these items to the party. These items are to remove bleed. One of the behemoth attacks applies a bleed. These also work for other players. My usual buff items. Honey is to be combined with the potions to make more vega potions for increased healing. Flow herbs for more water ammo, flash pods and flash bugs to make more, 
some barrel bombs for sweet bombing, power charms, talons, armor charms, talons, and some life powder. I've just put ammo in that I feel I would use so not to clutter my ammo bar. When the behemoth changes areas, I use this as an opportunity to restock up on everything. I've only really had to do this once at most per fight while almost exclusively using water ammo with the occasional sweet bomb. I did manage to save a few people with recovery shots. I like to keep it right next to my water ammo for easy access. It can be a bit awkward to use when people move around and that's why wide range is nicer as it's AoE and you don't have to target someone. The behemoth casts various spells throughout the fight, I'm just going to talk a bit about them and the strategies to survive. Charybdis. This summons tornadoes you can interrupt using a flash pod or dealing enough damage to the head while he's casting. If you don't have any flash pods left and it's on you, just run away and dump the tornado away from your group so the melees don't get trapped within it. Thunderbolt. He casts a lightning similar to Elder Dragon Kirin's. Move out of the way. If you or your teammates get hit, use a Nulbury to remove the Thunderblight. Meteor. This is a fire attack which could be easily avoided. Comet. This summons a big boulder. Make sure you keep the behemoth away from these so they don't get broken. Ecliptic Meteor. Now this is the most damaging move which will one shot you if you don't do the following. 1. Hide behind one of the boulders dropped by Comet. It's important to note that you want to line of sight the impact area of Ecliptic Meteor, not the behemoth himself. 2. If you can't get to a boulder in time or there are none due to them being destroyed, then make sure you have the Final Fantasy emote to avoid the attack. Just be sure to time the activation of this emote as soon as you see the elliptic meteor about to hit the ground. The emote itself will home in on the behemoth's head doing some bonus damage and making you look badass while your team cowers behind the rocks. Another new mechanic this encounter adds to the game is one based around enmity. Attacking his head will generate enmity or aggro if you prefer the term. Once a player has enmity on the behemoth, that person will be targeted exclusively by the Hema for as long as the targeting line remains on that player. You can flash pod the monster to reset this. I hope you found this video useful. Please keep an eye out for my next video which I will be covering builds utilising armour from the Behemoth. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.